During the past 10 years, the game of soccer has been growing in popularity with American children. Both kids and their parents have been participating as players, coaches, or just cheering on the teams. The videotape you are watching is designed as a learning tool for the new and intermediate soccer player. Team coaches and parents will also find the lessons and practice sessions extremely valuable. Each training lesson is conducted by a member of the Soccer Magic Professional Training Staff. Len Billis, a former pro coach and player, and T.J. Kostecki, with more than 12 years of youth coaching experience, will take you through each exciting segment. Through actual demonstration, you will learn how to follow a program which will improve your soccer skills. Four major soccer skills will be covered during this video lesson. They include proper dribbling technique, passing skills, receiving, and shooting. Let's begin with dribbling. Dribbling is one of the most important parts of soccer because it allows players to express their own individuality and also a good dribbler will be able to destroy defensive alignments by taking people on and getting past defenders. The key elements to dribbling are how well the player can control the ball close to his body, how well he can see the whole field of play while he is dribbling, and then how well he can execute the next move, which is to either score a goal or make an effective pass to a teammate. Usually we have different surfaces that players use for dribbling the ball. One of them is the bottom part of the foot and this is a very large surface which allows a player to continuously have contact with the ball. Another surface that we use is the inside part of the foot which allows the player to maneuver the ball to one side or the other side as he's dribbling or going past the field of play. Next, outside part of the foot allows the placement of the body between the defensive player who could be on one side and the ball to shield the ball from the opponent. And finally, the instep part of the foot is to move quickly past opposing players while running at full speed. Now what we'd like to show you are the four surfaces that you just heard. The first one is the inside of the foot, taking the ball, touching it with the inside of the foot, and keeping the ball close to your body. I'm going to ask one of you guys to step out. Chad, could you step out here, please, and uh, demonstrate using the inside of the foot and keep it close to you as you're coming forward and then coming back. Go ahead. Very good. And the movements are very quick and very sharp. So if a defender does step in, he doesn't have an opportunity to knock the ball away. Super. Thanks a lot, Chad. The second one we're going to share with you will be dribbling with the outside of the foot. Going one way, changing direction, coming back the other way. OK, uh, Dean, can you step out and show us that one? And come back the other way, good. All right, let's do it one more time. As you get halfway, please make a circle with the outside of the foot. All right, thank you. The third surface we're going to show you will be the instep, touching the ball with the instep and running in a straight fashion up and down the field. Can you step out, Drew, and uh, show us using the instep or another part of the instep is called the shoelaces. Go ahead, Drew. Very good. The last surface, which is probably the most important, is the sole of the foot. And the reason being is we have continuous contact on the ball wherever we move it. We can move it forward and back, away from opponents, or we can move the ball side to side, with our left foot or with our right foot. Jeff, can you step out, please? Sole of the foot, Jeff. Go forward and back, and also side to side. Notice how he keeps contact with the ball 
which gives the defender a difficult opportunity to take it away. Okay, and stop for a second. All right, what I'd like you to do is I want you to do the same thing you just did, but slow down a little bit. Okay, start off in this position, go side to side first, a little bit slower, and then go backwards, turn, go backwards the other way. Okay, try it. Good, good, that's much better. Super, thank you. Of course, learning the skills without any pressure is very simple and easy. In a game situation, you will be asked to solve the problems that happen, such as one, maintaining possession while a opponent is challenging you, and two, being able to have the courage and ability to sprint past opponents and to create a situation to score a goal for yourself or to set up an assist for a teammate. In order to keep possession while under pressure of an opponent, a couple key ingredients are a must. One, I need to be able to see the opposing player and also be able to see the ball. Two, I need to be able to keep the ball at the greatest distance away from the opposing player. And finally, three, I need to be able to take the punishment that this opposing player will dish out while trying to fight for the ball. While I'm doing all this, of course, I also need to be able to see where my teammates are, or where the spaces are opening up so I can get out of this tight situation. Now I'm going to ask Doug to put pressure on me while I try to maintain possession of the ball. The key part of the foot that I'm going to use will be the bottom part of the foot because this will allow me the opportunity to move the ball quickly while also keeping continuous contact with the ball. In this exercise, you may choose to restrict the playing space by placing four cones approximately five to 10 yards apart. Ready to go, Doug? Yep. Here we go. And play. Keep fighting. OK, I'm doing good or what? Come on, Doug. You can get it. Come on. Come on. Doug, now let's see how well you can do against an opponent your own size. Chad, what I want you to do is take the ball and control it using the bottom part of your foot and keeping your body between Dougie and the ball. Ready to play? And go. As you notice, Chad is using his arm to create a bigger barrier between him and the opposing player and controlling the ball without allowing the opposing player to touch it. You are allowed to move away from the pressure if you want, okay, and then start over again and play. Come on, Dougie, get to the ball. Get to the ball. That's the way. Keep fighting, keep fighting. When you win it, you can have it. When you win it, you can have it. <laughs> when you win it, you can cap the ball. Keep going, keep going, good. And stop. The two games you're about to see involve two very important aspects of dribbling. One, you need to be able to get opponents off balance to get by them. And two, once you get by them, you need to be able to accelerate and stay ahead of them. The first exercise that we're going to play is simply a game without a ball and it's staged with two cones and the simple thing that has to happen is one player has to be able to throw the opposing player off balance okay to touch one cone or the other now it sounds very simple but it isn't quite so usually the players will want to both race to one cone and really not create a situation where they deceive the opponent so the thing is to be able to trick the opposing player to make him think you're going one way, suddenly change direction and go the other way. As soon as he's catching up, put the brakes on again and change direction and go the other way again. OK, Anthony, we're going to play a little game here to develop the ability to throw people off balance. And the first thing we're going to ask you to do is to play defense while I play offense. Can you just stand in front of this line here? The object of the game is for me to get to that cone or to that cone as quickly as possible and to be as tricky as possible. So if I'm going one way and you're coming here, yes, come, 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 come to quickly change direction and leave you in the dust, okay? If I get to the cone, either cone first, okay, and touch it, I'll get a point. And if you, because you're playing defense and you're at a little bit of a disadvantage, okay, if you get there at the same time as I do, you will get a point, okay? So all you need is a tie to score, okay, ready? Okay, I'm going to start to do this by quickly making moves with my feet okay, to get you going one way 
or the other way. Okay, you ready to play? There we go. Okay, very good. Let's play. Hop. Come on, come on. Come on, nothing. Here we go. Let's play again. Ready? Here we go. Ah, oh, got you. Two nothing. Okay, good. One more time. Here we go. Getting tired? No, oh, good. I am. Here we go. Come on. You're doing really well. Ah, I win again. Okay, we can reverse that and you'll have a chance to play offense while one of your teammates play, plays defense. Okay, switch sides. Okay, why don't you play defense? Okay, ready? And go. Okay, always make sure you watch him. Okay, so you never turn away from him because you want to maybe at the last moment change your mind. If you don't see which way he's going, you won't be able to change your mind. And play. Good. Now let's try the same exercise with the ball. The object for me will be to dribble the ball, to throw you off balance while I'm doing this, and to get to one cone or the other. Now I will not have to touch the cone, I'll just have to dribble and get there. You still will have to touch the cone with your hand. You ready? Ah, oh, I like that. Okay, here we go. Oh, I like it! Great stuff. Okay, one nothing for me. Ready, and play. Okay, two nothing. One more time. Okay. Good. Okay, two to one. You got a point. Good job. All right, you switch to offense. Okay, and show us what you can do with the ball. Just with the ball. Okay, now same kind of moves, quick moves to throw him off balance, and then take the ball. If you see him catching up, you can change direction, or you can continue depending on how much you are ahead of him. But you got you got to be able to be tricky, fool him, get points, to one side or the other. Ready and play. Good. Good. And use the ball to touch the cone. Here we go. Start from the middle. Ready and play. Good. Perfect. Great. Safe at base. Okay, one more time. Here we go. And play. Great moves. Fast moves. Good. And take him again. Good. And you fool them a third time. Great stuff. We've looked at the basic way of throwing people off balance to get around opposing players. Now let's see what it looks like going to goal. We're going to ask Michael to play some defense here and Scott to play in goal. Okay, and I will show you the right way, Josh, to get around a player first by controlling the ball, then throwing him off balance and quickly accelerating to score a goal. Ready to play, Mike? Here we go. Okay, I will start my approach slowly. Okay, and when I get close enough, I'm going to start to look for a way of throwing Michael off balance for just a split second. As soon as I see him going one way, I can now accelerate and go the other way. And if I see that he did not fall for it, I can do the same move over again until he does fall for it. Ready? Here we go. Okay, Josh, now it's your turn. What I want you to do is approach the defender very slowly, read him to see how quickly he's going to challenge you, and then start to look for a way to throw him off balance. Once you see that you have him leaning one way or the other way, quickly accelerate around him and see what you can do about scoring a goal. Ready? Here we go. Good. And around him. Well done. Oh, beautiful. Dribbling is the method each individual player uses to propel the ball 
in any direction on the field and enables players to maintain possession of the ball, dribble past opponents. When maintaining possession, it is important to keep the ball at the greatest distance from the opposing player, see the ball and the opponent at all times, be able to quickly change the position of the ball. This can be easily accomplished by using the sole of the foot. When dribbling past opponents, it is important to approach the opponent with the body close to the ball. Use body movements to shift the opponent's balance. Once the opposing player is off balance, advance the ball past him and proceed at a faster pace. The next technique we will cover will be passing. There's basically three reasons to pass the ball. One, to maintain possession. Two, to advance the ball forward into an attacking position. And finally, to reward a teammate who's running into an open space. The three areas of the foot that we use to pass are the same we use in dribbling. The first is the inside of the foot, which is the most common pass used over a short distance. The second is the instep drive, which is used as a sharper pass for a teammate that's a little bit further away. And the third area is the outside of the foot, which is used to flick the ball to a teammate who's a short distance away. Let me take a moment and I'll demonstrate those three passes. The key points to remember when passing the ball to the inside of the foot are one, your foot is solid as you make contact on the ball. Two, if I took a line and I drew it through the ball vertically and horizontally, this is the point of contact I want to make when we pass the ball. Next is my non-kicking foot I place alongside the ball and I point in the direction I want the ball to go. Finally, if you took a look at your stomach and you pictured a flashlight on your stomach shining in the direction that you want the ball to go, always my stomach is pointing in the direction of my target. For the instep, my approach is the same as the inside of the foot. The non-kicking foot is placed in the same position alongside the ball, but now the surface area I use is the top of the foot or the instep to strike the ball. As I strike the ball forward, my foot continues to travel forward through the ball. The third and final pass is the outside of the foot pass, which is used to deliver the ball by flicking the ankle. Now our approach is the same. We start from behind, but this time our non-kicking foot is placed a few inches behind the ball. My kicking foot strikes the ball at 7 o'clock, and my follow through after I strike the ball will be in the direction of the target. If Paul and Bob are going to show us a little bit of passing the ball in actual conditions without any pressure. Notice as they pass the ball, the ankle is solid. If the pass is made correctly, there will be a top spin on the ball and it will go forward. And ho. Okay. Next thing what we'll do is to build it up in a more match related situation is Paul, when you receive the ball, I want you to turn and dribble over to the direction on your right. Whenever you're ready, you could turn and make the pass over to Bob. Bob, you're gonna be running alongside him also. Bobby, you receive the ball, you come back, dribble, and you make the pass over to Paul. Okay? Let me see it happen. Notice as they pass the ball, the flashlight is still pointing in the direction they want the ball to go. And stop. Okay. This time, what I'd like you to do is see if you can do the same thing with the outside of the foot. Bobby, I'm going to ask you to go one way, dribble the ball to the side, and whenever you're ready to pass the ball, Instead of using the inside of the foot, I want you to now pass the ball with the outside of the foot. Whenever you're ready, you could turn and pass the ball over to Paul. There we go. And come back this way, too. Notice it's now more of a flick. It's a short flick and a short, crisp pass.
Very good. Okay, now we ask Paul and Bobby to use the instep to pass the ball. The pass is a little bit sharper. Again, the approach is the same. Good. That was very nice. And notice if the ball goes over to the side, it means we're not hitting the ball straight right down the middle. Okay, stop for a second. So what I'd like you to do is, again, take the ball and divide it in half, up and down, and side to side. And the mark right behind the ball is where I want you to strike the ball at your instep. Try that. Very nice. At this time, we're ready to do some match condition training. What we've done prior to this were exercises where there was limited movement. Next thing you're going to see is we're going to incorporate a fun passing game, which gives us an opportunity to challenge the better players all the way up to the line to the very best players. Let's match up. Jeff, you can match up with Paul, Doug, you and Drew match up as partners. And it's a very simple game. What we're going to do is we're going to give you an opportunity to score points while passing. And throughout the game, I'm going to be putting certain challenges or pressures on you guys to make you work a little bit harder and make you perform a little bit better. Okay? To start off, in our square over here, what I'd like you to do is we're going to pass the ball back and forth, but a couple rules in this game. Number one, you could only pass the ball to a moving target. And you could only pass the ball as you're moving. Okay, so there's no standing still in this exercise. All right, let's see what it looks like. Just keep the ball inside the grid and get used to passing with someone running in front of you. There we go, good stuff. Okay, try to keep the ball within the grid. Okay, and stop. Now, a couple things we're gonna do to make the game a little more interesting. One, whenever you make a pass to a teammate, Okay? You're going to give him a little bit of a signal that he knows you're ready to pass. For example, instead of having Paul run around until he's tired, Jeff, what I'd like you to do is, when you dribble the ball and you're ready to pass the ball, I want you to look up and make eye contact with Paul. Paul, as you see him make eye contact with you, that's the time I want you to make a strong run into open space. All right? You guys are on. All four of you can do the same thing. Dribble, dribble, look around, look over your shoulder, and when you're ready, make eye contact with your partner and lead him with a pass. Okay, now we're also using different surfaces of the foot. You could use the inside of the foot because it's the most accurate, flick the ball with the outside, or drive the ball with the instep. If it's too crowded, hold on to the ball. No one's going to push you to make a pass when you don't have to. That's it. And stop. Remember, you must make a pass only if your teammate is running. Okay? Doug was hanging around over here. Make a pass only when he's running. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to keep some points to make it a little more interesting, a little more competitive. Right? Every time you make a successful pass where your teammate receives the ball with movement, you guys get a point. Every time your ball hits someone else's ball, you lose a point. In fact, both teams lose a point. Every time the ball goes outside of our grid, you lose a point. Okay? You understand? So there's a lot of ways of losing points. You must be very accurate and sharp to score points. OK? Everybody has zero. We'll start off from scratch. Have fun with it. The signal is when your teammate looks up in the air, One. makes eye contact, One. that's when you score a point. Now at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to act as a defender. If I take the ball away or knock it away, same thing goes, you lose a point. OK? Let's see what happens. Start off. Seven. Oh, you lose a point, guys. The ball goes out of the grid. Eight. Ah, you lose one over here. Ah. Now the game gets a little bit different under pressure. You lose a point. Nine. Nine. Ten. Ah, lucky. Eleven. Ok, 
couple times you guys got lucky. You were nutmegging me, putting the ball through my legs over here. Son of a gun. I got a question for you. Hold on to the ball. OK, as soon as there's pressure on you in a game and you don't have an opportunity to pass the ball forward, what do you do with the ball? You turn around and try and pass it. OK, turn around and pass it back. But before you can pass the ball back, what do you need to do with your body? Anybody know? Yes? Block the ball or shield. Block the ball or shield it, OK? I didn't see one guy shield the ball. Everybody, when I came up to you, you immediately tried to not make me or made the pass. One or two times I did steal it. Other times you got it between my legs. If you're under pressure, unless you're sure you can make that pass, you need to be able to shield it. So keep the ball in front of you. As I come up and I close off space, we shield it. Okay? Keep the ball on the outside of the foot. All right? Great. Now, who's your partner? Doug. Doug, if I'm putting pressure on him over here, where are you going to run? Over to the cone? Over to this cone? Where are you going to go? There. Where? To help him out. To help him out. Help him out in supporting space, which is a little bit behind him. Okay? We don't have much room because of the cones, but that's where you need to go. Okay, you two guys get out of the picture so he could run for a moment. There we go. Right there, good. Fine, that's good. That's good enough, guys. Now, come into supporting space right over here. You make the pass. Great, and hold it. Now I put pressure on you. You shield, hold it. Where are you going? Great, in supporting space. This way you don't lose the ball. Remember the following points when you pass the ball with the inside of the foot. Your stomach should be pointed at the target. Your toes should be up with your foot turned to the side. Keep your ankle solid when making contact with the ball and follow through in the direction of the target. When using your instep to pass the ball, keep your non-kicking foot pointed at the target. The top of your foot should strike the ball and the follow through will again be in the direction of the target. Using the outside of the foot, remember to keep your non-kicking foot four to six inches to the side of the ball and four to six inches behind the ball. The toe is down and turned in, and then finally, pass the ball with a short flick in the direction of the target. We're ready now for our next technique lesson. We've gone over dribbling and passing, and this time, we're going to go over receiving the ball. Jeff, I'm going to ask you to help me out a little bit over here to cover our four areas of receiving the ball. The first area, what I like to cover, is a ball that comes looping in the air. What surface of your body can you present to receive the ball? The instep. The instep of the foot. Thank you. And that's either the instep or sometimes known as the shoelaces. OK. Second area, if the ball is a little bit higher, what other part of our body could we present to stop the ball? Your thigh. Your thigh. OK, question for you. If the ball comes up to my thigh, do I make it firm or do I make it very loose? Very loose. Very loose, OK? If the thigh is very loose, then the ball will absorb itself and it won't bounce away. If it's very stiff, the ball, catch it if you can, will bounce away. All right? One more time. If it's loose, the ball will stay closer. All right? And again, if a ball now comes a little bit higher up in the air, what surface of your body can you use to stop it? Chest. Your chest. OK, so your chest is right up here. Huh? And the last surface? Uh, your head. Your head. Forehead, top of the head, or the side of the head? Forehead. Forehead, good. Forehead because the forehead is the strongest bone in the body. What happens if I try to receive it off the top of my head? It might go in another direction. Yeah, sure. It might go up in the air. And at the same time, can I see the ball? No, not at all. So I need to take my body and my head, change it around, and also move it backwards a little bit. All right? Let's start off with the first one, the instep. OK, what I'd like you to do is, is holding the ball in the air, I'm going to take the ball, drop it waist high, present a target, a pad, a landing pad for the ball. So before the ball hits the ground, make sure it hits your foot. OK? Watch me first. Just take it from here, present a target, and keep the ball next to you. Go ahead. There you go. Super. Yeah, you can do it a couple times. OK, and let's do both feet, left and right. Great. OK, notice, keep on doing it. Notice the toe is up in the air a little bit when he receives the ball, not too high. 
is the higher he goes, the more the ball needs to travel before it hits the ground. As soon as the ball hits his foot, it stays very close to the ground. OK, this is good. Let me do a little more challenge with you, make it more game related. Let's do it with movement. Pick the ball up in the air, toss it up in the air, and with movement, receive it and dribble. Very good. And let's do both feet again, left foot and right foot. Very nice. Again, the ball is close to your body, so the defender does not have an opportunity to knock the ball away. Move up a little closer. OK. Next one we'll go up to is the thigh, which we just presented. Same thing. Pick the ball up in your hand, toss it up, and from the thigh to the ground. Good. Keep on doing it. Notice the thigh is parallel to the sky. If the thigh is out a little bit too far, the ball will bounce away. If it's too high, the ball gets too close to the body. OK, Jeff, let's do this now. Let's go from our thigh to our landing pad on the foot. And keep it close to you. Good stuff. And with the dribble toward me, thigh, foot, and the dribble toward me. All right, so we went thigh, we went foot. Third one is what surface? Yes. Thank you. OK, take the ball up in your hand now. Huh? Toss it up in a stationary position. Present a target with your chest and let it land. Again, present a target. Whoa, that's a low toss. Present a target and let the ball land. Try it. And keep on doing it. OK? Chest right to your foot. Keep it close to your body. There you go. One more time. OK, and with movement, toss the ball up in the air. Receive it off the chest to the foot. Again, with movement, toss it up while you're moving. Yes, and keep it close. Okay. And the last year we'll go over will be the head. Take the ball in your hand, toss it up. Present a target and keep the ball close to your body. Stop for a second. Notice a couple things which I'm doing over here. As I toss the ball up in the air, right, am I standing straight up in the air or am I doing something different with my legs? Bending down with your knees. Okay, why would I want to do that, you think? So you have a little more cushion because if you don't, it'll bounce off. Good. Again. There you go. Let's stop for a second. Let's go to the chest again. Toss the ball up in the air. Receive it with your chest. But one thing I want you to do to present a little better target with your chest, look at my heels and notice what I'm doing with my heels as I toss the ball. You know, what's that? I'm bringing my heels up off the ground, which happens which what happens to my chest as I bring my heels off the ground. Your chest is the target. Great. OK. Again, I toss the ball up in the air. I present a bigger target with my chest by lifting my heels off the ground. OK, try it. OK, now you could do any one you want. Head, chest, thigh, or foot, it's up to you. The last two areas of receiving we're going to cover are the inside of the foot and the outside of the foot wedge reception. These are the only surfaces that we use first by allowing the ball hit the ground and then the inside surface, allowing it to hit the ground and also the outside surface. Okay? For the inside of the foot, if a ball approaches me from straight on and I have a defender in front of me, the only thing I need to do is create a wedge with my foot and allow the ball to hit the ground and my foot and careem in the direction I want it to go. As I use the inside of the foot, the ball will travel to my left. If the ball's coming straight at me and I need to go to my right side, 
I create a wedge with the outside of the foot, and I sweep the ball to the outside. Hey, Jeff, why don't you toss the ball up in the air and sweep first to the inside and sweep first to the out. That's it. OK, and I'd like to see you do the same thing now using your left foot. Sweep it to the inside and sweep it to the outside. Good stuff. Very good. Next in the receiving progression is taking the game and putting it to goal. As often as possible, coaches should create games where players complete the task by shooting on goal. The game you're watching is called one-on-one -on -one receiving and shooting. In this game, the goalkeepers are actually training the field players. The rules of the game are as follows. The goalkeeper tosses the ball underhand to allow the field player enough time to react to the flight of the ball. The field player has two touches to score a goal one to control and another to shoot. However, the ball must first touch a part of the body before it hits the ground. Points are recorded when the field player scores a goal or when the goalkeeper makes a save. Whoever reaches five points first is a winner. After five points are scored, the players switch roles. The goalkeeper becomes a field player and the field player is now the goalkeeper. Remember, Emphasis is placed on controlling the ball with the techniques learned during this segment. Players should also be encouraged to receive the ball in front of them and close to the body. When receiving the ball on the ground, the two surfaces we generally use are the inside of the foot and the outside of the foot. The inside of the foot pass is used when there's no pressure and the player has an opportunity to receive the ball in front of him. Right now, Jeff and Paul are just passing the ball without any pressure, receiving with one foot and passing with the other. As the ball comes, instead of creating a strong, firm surface, they're cushioning the ball, making their foot very loose so the ball sits close to their body. Okay, put a little more pace on the ball, guys, so we could actually see that you're making the, your foot softer. There we go. Notice, the ball goes a little bit faster, but still, they have it close under control. And stop. Okay, this is fine. Now we present a problem of a defender entering the play. Okay, what I'm gonna do, Paul, is I'm gonna come from behind, and Jeff, what I'm going to ask you to do is, is as I come close to you, instead of receiving the ball at the inside of the foot, receive it with the outside of the foot, and then pass the ball back. OK? Let's see the difference. And one more time. Receive the ball at the outside of the foot and freeze. We're already in a shielding position. For me to get to the ball, I must go through Jeff or go around him. And stop for a second. Now put, receive the ball at the inside of the foot in a position for the inside of the foot. Great. If, he, if Jeff receives with the inside of the foot, it's very easy for me to reach the ball and knock it away, or as he receives it, to knock his foot in the ball at the same time. This creates a lot of problems for the player. Pass the ball back, please. Shielding away. As he's under pressure, now he passes the ball back. A very important part of soccer is allowing yourself to have space to receive the ball, to have space to pass the ball. And the tool which we talked about earlier are vision. Your eyes are the most important part of your body. They give you the feedback which tells you if a player is open or if a player is on you and you must pass the ball. In our simple game of passing, we have a term we call total vision. As a player receives the ball on the ground or in the air, what we hope is that he has enough time for himself to look before he receives the ball to see if there's a player coming on 
or to see if there's space for him to expose. Can you stop for a second, guys? Let me break this down for you a little bit better. What I'd like you to do, Jeff, is before you receive the ball, I want to see if you have enough time to look over your shoulder and identify what is happening behind you. One, I'll play a defender. Take a look if I'm coming at you. If I'm coming at you, what do you need to do with the ball? Shield the ball away from you. Very good. What if you have space behind you? I can turn on it and go. Great. So you could save yourself time, and you could save yourself a lot of space. Right. Now, Paul, what I want you to do is, is just pass the ball normally as you would back and forth. I'm going to come and I'm going to try to intercept the ball. And we're going to see, first of all, if Jeff has enough time to receive the ball by looking over his shoulder without any pressure. All right, let's see if it could happen. Do it a few times. And stop. Do you have enough time? Plenty of time. Good. Let's see if we could incorporate a defender, me, and see if you could solve the same problem now. If you have space behind you, what I want you to do is I want you to turn in one motion. You think you could do that? Mm -hmm. Let's try. Let's see without any pressure. Receive the ball and turn. Great. Now let's do it again. And now I want you to receive the ball with the inside of the foot in one motion. Super. OK, and hold it. OK, you have two choices, Jeff. The first choice is, if I come up to close off, you receive with the outside of the foot. If you have space behind you, you turn in one motion. What is the signal? What's going to tell you whether or not you have time to turn? My head is turning backwards. OK, and when do you look behind you? As soon as he strikes the ball. Super. Again. As soon as he touches the ball, that's the time for you to look. Not when it's close to your body, but as soon as he touches the ball. OK, ready? Whenever you guys are ready. Good. And go back again. Super. What happened? Huh? What happened there? He came up and then went back. And went back. And that happens in a game. Defender moves up and moves away. OK, keep on playing. Great. Super. Thank you very much, guys. Remember the following points when receiving the ball in the air with the instep. Keep the toe pointed up and loose. Present the top of the foot as a landing pad. Relax and absorb the impact. When receiving with the thigh as a target, keep your thigh muscle loose and once again, relax and absorb the impact. When using the chest as a target, remember to lean back and lift your heels on impact. If you're receiving the ball properly, the ball will rise off the chest before dropping to the ground. When presenting your forehead as a target, tilt your head back and bend your knees on impact. The ball should rise slightly before dropping to the ground. The wedge reception is an additional technique used to control the ball. There are three points to remember. Create a wedge by bringing the leg out to the side. Present a target for the ball to strike after it hits the ground. And once the ball hits the target, relax the foot. There are several additional points to remember when receiving the ball on the ground. You can use the inside or the outside of the foot. Take a quick look behind you just as your teammate passes the ball. Present the proper target and then finally relax and absorb the impact of the ball. Shooting and scoring is the most exciting part of any game. Certain unique skills apply themselves in goal scoring. Let's take a look at the various techniques available and the mechanics of striking the ball. Let's also take a look at the visual preparation necessary for selecting target areas of the goal. We begin with the proper use of the instep. The instep is the primary surface used to shoot the ball, and it is also a technique the player can use to shoot the ball with greater speed. 
To develop the correct method of shooting, the player needs to focus on the following areas. To deliver the ball to its destination, the player's body should face the target. This is readily accomplished by placing the non-kicking foot four to six inches alongside the ball. The player should also remember to point his foot at the target. As a kicking foot begins its forward motion, the player's toes should be pointed down. The player should also watch the instep make contact. After contact with the ball, the kicking foot must follow through in the direction of the target. The following exercises are designed to help the player develop proper instep contact with the ball. The first exercise demonstrated shows the player holding the ball in his hands and striking the ball with his left and right instep. This exercise lets the player become familiar with striking the ball with the instep. The next exercise involves two players passing the ball. The players control the ball before making the pass with the instep and then will pass the ball using the instep. The primary source of difficulty lies with the player's toes coming up to make contact with the ball. To eliminate this problem, it is useful to have the coach or parent hold the ball in front of the player with one hand while using the other hand to reposition the ankle and guide the swing of the leg. This can be repeated until the player is properly kicking the ball with the toe in the down position. Once the player has achieved proper shooting form, he or she should be challenged with the following game-related exercises. In the game of one against one, players are grouped in units of two. One player assumes the goalkeeper's role, while the other player assumes the role of the field player or shooter. The game begins with the field player shooting 10 yards from the goal. The goal is five yards wide. The object of the game is for the field player to score goals while shooting a stationary ball. After 10 shots have been taken, players switch roles. At this stage of training, it is important to introduce the visual preparation which is necessary to score goals. Visual preparation takes place just before a shot is executed. The player should take a quick look to identify the location of the goal, the position the goalkeeper has assumed in the goal, and the player should also select a target area. The game of one against one with a moving ball is similar to the previous game just seen. However, by adding the element of movement, this practice exercise becomes more match-related. To play the game, the player simply moves the ball a short distance before striking the ball with his instep. The next two games add the element of striking a ball that is in flight. An extra effort and concentration is necessary since the timing of the kick must be more precise. The full volley is executed using the instep to strike the ball as it is about to drop to the ground. Normally, this is three to six inches from the ground. The non-kicking foot is placed approximately 12 inches behind and six inches to the side of where the ball would land. The player must wait until the ball drops low enough before making contact with the ball. Striking the ball in this fashion will ensure a low trajectory and more goals. The half volley requires the same concentration as the full volley. The ball is struck immediately after it hits the ground. The placement of the non-kicking foot is the same as in the full volley. Follow through in both the full volley and the half volley is in the direction of the target. If players continue to neglect visual preparation when shooting, the look first habit is reinforced with a simple exercise. The exercise begins with players dribbling to goal. Shots are attempted as the goalkeeper moves between the posts. The unorthodox movement by the goalkeeper forces the players to look first before shooting. Assuming that visual preparation plus the shooting technique have been mastered, the next step in developing goal scoring aptitude is to progressively add pressure. Eventually, shooting must take place under the full pressure of match condition play. In the first pressure related exercise, the coach takes on the role of a defender. He increases pressure 
to a point where the player is challenged, yet able to succeed. In the next exercise, the pressure is provided by having a defender chase an attacker from behind. Action is initiated when the attacking player begins his dribble. Pressure increases as players battle to gain possession of the ball. The player's attention is immediately transferred to the challenging player. In this game, action is initiated as the coach serves the ball to two players standing side by side. In a variation of the previous game, the ball is served to players lying flat on their stomachs. The final pressure stages demand constant fighting for possession and shooting within the penalty area. There is no rest period after goals are scored. Players rest as soon as they approach fatigue. Action is controlled by the coach's rhythm of serving the ball and verbal commands. Whether there are two or three players, remember these simple guidelines. A new ball is served under the following conditions. One, a goal is scored. Two, a shot goes wide or over the goal. Three, the goalkeeper makes a save. And four, a player dribbles too far from the goal scoring area. Two points must be emphasized during this exercise. Due to constant pressure, players must exploit shooting opportunities as soon as they occur. And each player should attempt to be first to the ball. However, if he arrives late, he can win the ball from the opposing player. Once the player has gained possession of the ball, he can take the offensive and attempt to score a goal. The ultimate test under pressure occurs when three players battle for possession and scoring honors. There are a few simple but important points to remember when shooting the ball. Take a quick look to see the position of the goal and the goalkeeper. Decide on a target area, and finally, watch your foot make contact with the ball. To make practice more enjoyable, coaches can use a number of games that have been adapted from the playground to the soccer field. The following games are fun to play and reinforce skills that are learned during practice. One game that can be played is called Soccer Tag. The game begins with two to eight players on a side. Half the players form one team with each player getting a ball. The other players will form another team that does not have a ball. The object of the game is for one team to dribble while trying to tag or touch the other team's players. If a player is tagged, he becomes frozen. He must remain frozen until a teammate tags him. Once the tag is completed, he is free to rejoin the action. Roles are reversed when all the players are simultaneously frozen. Playing freeze tag is not only fun, but it develops many soccer skills. These include controlling the ball, agility training, and finally, cooperation among teammates. Another game that is fun to play is handball keep away. The object of the game is to maintain possession of the ball while passing with the hand. Points are scored when five consecutive passes are made by either of the two teams or if the ball is headed through the goal. Several skills are reinforced for young players, including the development of field awareness, maintaining possession, as well as moving without the ball. During the past 60 minutes, you've had a chance to explore the step-by-step -step soccer training program that has become the Soccer Magic Trademark. The video lesson details the fundamental soccer skills and the basic elements that challenge individual players' abilities. The Soccer Magic Training Program develops the basics necessary to play the game as it is played throughout the world. This is what makes Soccer Magic Training unique. For more information about Soccer Magic clinics and camps or video lessons, please write to